happy to introduce Matthew Zapruder. Um, Matthew's poem, Lazy Comet, Hurry, was featured as a poem of the week in Narrative Magazine. He's the author of two collections of poetry, American Linden and the wonderfully titled The Pajamaist. Um, Come On, All You Ghosts is forthcoming from Copper Canyon Press in 2010. Please give a warm welcome to Matthew. Perfect. Hello. Wow. Um, I'm the last one, as befits a Z. So, um, thank you, narrative. Thank you, everyone. It's, it was great, great reading. I was totally, I never can listen when I have to read. I'm always like narcissistically petrified, but I actually like totally dug that reading and it was great. So, anyway, I know it's um, poetry time now. You know what would suck, but be kind of awesome is if, like, if I accidentally hit the switch and this thing got ground up somehow. Um, so I'm going to start a tea. There's a tea theme. Um, it should be clear what the... Uh, this is the first poem in my first book. Um, it should be clear what the sin is. And um, this also kind of explains why I've never had a permanent teaching job. Um, I didn't even... Yeah. It's called Sweet Jesus. Tea, tea, butter, the structure. We were discussing the death of iambic pentameter, though we didn't know it. She said with the notch above her lips, I have a perfect ass. And I thought the thing about asses is they're not perfect. They have a kind of fatal flaw. But I wasn't going to argue with such a proud collection of stumbling convergences. I wanted to say, can I stick my eyes down your throat? What would emerged was those eyebrows, are they for rent? How are they tragic? By announcing a mountainlessness that aches for its climbers, a brow that needs no announcing, lips that shift as mapped by insomnia, one hidden rippling bone that can never a patio floated by. About us, a Cambridge was revolving. Somewhere, marriage was discussing a couple flattened by the new gravity of summer. But it wasn't us. We were refusing to cross that most glorious breed of slowness. I vow I will touch you, always more distant stranger. Thank you. This next poem uh, is The Sin is Envy, but it's envy of one country for another country. It's a whole big envy. And the poem is called Canada. <laughs> Canada. By Canada, I have always been fascinated. All that snow and acquiescing, all that emptiness, all those butterflies marshaled into an army of peace. Moving north away from me, Canada has no border. Away like the state, its northern border withers into the sky dome. In a world full of mistrust and self-medication, I've always hated Canada. It makes me feel like I'm shouting at a child for letting a handful of pine needles run through his fist. Canada gets along with everyone, while I hang, a dark cloud above the schoolyard. I know we need war, all the skirmishes to keep our borders where we've placed them, all the migration, all the difference. Just like Canada, the Dalai Lama is now in Canada, and everyone is fascinated. When they come to visit me, no one ever leaves me saying, the most touching thing about him is he's so human. <laughs> or. I was really glad to hear so many positive ideas regardless of the consequences expressed. Or I could drink a case of you. <laughs> I have pity but no respect for others, which is not compassion, just ordinary love based on attitudes towards myself. I wonder how long I can endure. In Canada, the leaves are falling. When they do, 
each one rustles maybe to the white-tailed deer of sadness. And it's clear that whole country does not exist to make me feel crappy like a candelabra hanging above the prison world, condemned to freely glow. I read that, I read that poem in Canada and it totally was not funny to do that. It was like, <laughs> they were like, fuck you. Um, okay. This poem, these next two are the last, I'm going to read two more poems. And the next, these are um, in my forthcoming book. And the first poem is called Frankenstein Love. And it's based on a painting by an artist named Chris Uphughes. Okay. Frankenstein Love. I think there was a movie once where Frankenstein fell in love with a vampire. A small mummy at first interfered, but later provided the requisite necessary clarifications. He can only meet you at night. Her face is scarred in a permanent expression of doom, but her bolt glows whenever she sees you. The rival for the vampire's affection was a vaguely feminine zombie. Frankenstein felt not very mysterious. Many different feelings cycled below whoever's skin she had been given. Do they even belong to her? In the many pages of the Book of Love, this is only one story, but everyone goes through it once. The main question is, will you be the one unable to control your temper sewed together as you are from the past, or the one who always ends up turning away in search of another likeness. And thank you. That poem's gonna be in Narrative Magazine, if I'm not mistaken. Awesome to be not mistaken. Um, and this is the last poem, and thank you all for being here. It's, um, it's a, hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> This is a great thing. San Francisco showing up with the fucking going to the readings and everything. Woo! All right. Wow, that was so out of character for me. Like the woo woo. It's all good. Okay, this is the last poem. It's called Pocket. Pocket. I like the word pocket. It sounds a little safely dangerous. Like knowing you once bought a headlamp in case the lights go out in a catastrophe. You will put it on your head and your hands will still be free. Or standing in a forest and staring at a picture in a plant book while eating scary looking wildflowers. Saying pocket makes me feel potentially but not yet busy. I'm getting ready to have important thoughts. I'm thinking about my pocket, <laughs> which has its own particular geology. Maybe you know what I mean. I mean, I basically know what's in there and can even list the items, but also there are other bits and pieces made of stuff that might not even have a name. Only a scientist could figure it out. And why would a scientist do that? <laughs> he or she should be curing brain diseases or making sure that asteroid doesn't hit us. Look out, scientists. Today, the unemployment rate is 9.4%. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I tried to think about it harder for a while, then tried standing in an actual stance of mystery and not knowing towards the world, which is my job, as is staring at the backyard and for one second believing I'm actually rising away from myself, which is maybe what I have in common right now with you. And now I'm placing my hand on this very dusty table and brushing away the dust. And now I'm looking away and thinking for the last time about my pocket. But this time I'm thinking about its darkness, like the bottom of the sea, but without the blind fluorescent creatures floating in a circle around the black box, which along with tremendous thunder and huge shards of metal from the airplane sank down and settled here where it rests, cheerfully beeping. <laughs>